You're listening to Create Wealth Through Franchising, and I'm your host, Kim Daly. In my 20 years as a franchise consultant, I've helped hundreds of people achieve their dreams of building and scaling franchise businesses to create wealth. The interview you're about to hear can also be found on my YouTube channel, where I post new franchising content multiple times per week. Please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast and to my YouTube channel at kimdaily.tv. Now, enjoy the show. Welcome back to Kim Daily TV. Today, we have another Daily Double. (laughs) My good friend Matt Four is back today. Matt, welcome back to Kim Daily TV. Thanks, Kim. Happy to be here and happy 2022. Oh, same to you. Thank you so much. Matt and I had such an invigorating conversation the last time he was a guest on my show, just sharing how he got into real estate and has had so much success. Look at his face at a very young age. (laughs) And coming, getting to know Matt a little bit, I learned that he was a very accomplished athlete. Then he goes into a sales career and he's accomplished in his professional career. He breaks off, he gets into real estate, he's accomplished in real estate. And I'm like, what's the common denominator? The common denominator is Matt. And during that conversation, he mentioned something about the four pillars of success. Well, you folks know if Kim Daly is anything, she is a mindset coach. So this was very intriguing to me. So Matt is here today to tell us about how he has achieved so much in his very young age and to share more about his four pillars of success. So Matt, with that introduction, please lead us into the four pillars of success. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks again for having me back on. I know last time we were talking, we talked a little bit about Ironman triathlete and um, how I how I was into that. And um, uh, if, for those of you that don't know, an Ironman is a 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike, 26.2 mile uh, run all in a single day on a single vent. I just love torture. And what I really learned through that process is kind of how you can go achieve such a monumental goal. And then I started realizing that it applies to so many other things. So the four pillars that I have are really around clarity, consistency, efficiency, and then compounding. And if you're all right with them, I'd love to just go through each one of those and kind of walk everybody through those. Yeah, and the relevance of this conversation to Kim Daly followers, right? That we are trying to become high performing business owners. We are interested in personal development because the more we become, the more we have to offer our employees, our customers, our businesses, right? That's the relevance to this conversation. So absolutely, Matt, let's dive into that first one, clarity. Absolutely. Well, clarity is the number one and it's number one for a region because it is the most important thing I think you can have whenever you go out to set up to accomplish anything. What I like to say to people is that we think our decisions are binary, that there's a yes and a no, a one and a zero, a right or a left. But what we really don't understand is that when we make a decision, it starts marching us down a path where the other options we have available start to become more limited. So if you don't know where you're going, if you don't know the end state of what you're trying to achieve, any road will get you there. And what I try to tell people is, what would you do if money wasn't an option? What would you do if you didn't have to worry about going to um, uh, having to worry about paying for a house over your head and and feeding your kids and things like that? And I would assume that most folks out there, if they're listening to this kind of content, wouldn't just go down to Mexico and drink Mai Tais for the rest of their life. So I think that um, kind of tying this to an investment perspective, if I came to you and said, hey, Kim, I've got a great investment opportunity for you. You'll be able to double your money in two years. You'll probably say, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. But then what if I told you, hey, you're going to have to work 50 more hours a week and there's a high chance that you could lose it all at the end of it. Now you're starting to rethink it, right? So if we don't have an understanding of where our end state is, that we can get sucked down into temptations. And again, going back to it, your options become more limited as you go down that route. So clarity is the most important. And that's why we start off with clarity. I love it, Matt. And let's relate it to the daily coach process in terms of guiding people through an investigation to explore a franchise. I'm constantly talking people away from 
passion for the widget. I'm infinitely more interested in what you're trying to accomplish through the business, right? The business is the pass through vehicle. So I tell people there's never going to be a right time to invest in a business, the right time and the right, or, or there's never going to be like the perfect business, right? People are like, when I find the right thing, then I'm going to do it. I'm like, no, when you are clear about what you're using this business for and why now is the time right business will appear like every single time. So I 100% up top pork chop, clarity is absolutely number one. What's number two? <laughs> up top pork chop, I like it. Well, once you're clear <laughs> on where you're going and what your goals are, then you have to start doing some consistent actions. And I think I said this last time, but I wanna give your listeners grace here that when we talk about consistency, it's about doing something every day that marches you towards your goal. It's not necessarily about doing the right thing every day. And I think Ooh. this is where people get tripped up, myself and included is that we're always trying to get the perfect next step or the perfect thing that we should be doing every single day when really it's about just doing something consistently. So I'll give you an example here and I'm not a huge basketball fan, but uh, Kobe Bryant's death was uh, coming up here and uh, the anniversary of his death. And I think we can all agree that he was one of the best basketball players to ever play the sport. 30,000 points, 18 time all-star, 15 time first, uh, first team all, all uh, NBA five-time NBA championship. He was drafted straight out of high school in 1996, 13th. Kim, do you know who was drafted number one that year? No. <laughs> Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson was just as bit as talented as Kobe Bryant. And I know this because I grew up in Virginia and he was in the Tidewater region. He got scholarships to play baseball, to play football, to play basketball. And in his NBA career, he had 24,000 points, 11 time all-star, seven time NBA first team. And he was drafted number one that year. He never won an NBA title. And how do we remember Allen Iverson? Most people will know practice. We talk about practice. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, he has this huge rant after he loses the NBA championship to Kobe Bryant going into that next year where he's talking about, why are we talking about practice? I'm the, I'm the big star here. I am the, the uh, number one player in the league and all this kind of stuff. And you guys want to talk about practice. Here's a guy that didn't put in the consistent reps every single day and just got to a point where he plateaued. So again, I'm not a huge basketball fan. I just think the analogies between those two people uh, are huge. It's so awesome. I'll, uh, the, the daily coach, a little simpler. Let's go back to personal training to our, like it, our goals in the gym, right? It's not going to the gym every single day and, you know, hitting it so hard every single day that then you end up burning out or, you know, being so perfect on your diet. And when your diet isn't perfect, then throwing it all to the wind. It's just incrementally a get ready for it daily. <laughs> Sorry, I can't resist myself. <laughs> A daily habit of doing something. I say to my people, when you start a business, the first year is just massive imperfect action, right? Experience is really the only teacher in life. You have to put yourself in the arena and have the experience in order to then refine that experience. So I completely agree with that. Doing something, it doesn't have to be everything. It doesn't have to be perfect. It, you just have to start and you have to get the momentum going. I yeah. love that. And when, we, when I talk about Ironman, it's, it's that, right? I go and do something from a workout standpoint every single day. Now, every single day, I'm not doing long workouts. Sometimes it's literally putting on my shoes and going for a five-minute run and recognizing that my body needs rest. But I do something every day. So for your listeners out there, that could be something as simple as transfer a dollar from your checking account to your savings account. It could be doing something like listen to 10 minutes of a podcast. It could be something like listen to five or read five pages of a book. And uh, I don't have them right here, but I have a huge book collection of hundreds and hundreds of books that I've read and kept. And I never throw them away because I grew up dyslexic and those are little miniature trophies for me. And I didn't sit down and read all of them at once. I didn't sit down and read a single book, all of them at once. It's those five pages every single day that adds up over time. Daily consistent action. <laughs> I'm shameless. You, you have such a good last name for puns. <laughs> <laughs> and you are very punny. <laughs> I remember that from our last conversation. <laughs> okay. What's well, number three. So we let's, let's, re, let's reiterate because my mind, okay, we have clarity and now we have consistency. What's number three. 
Absolutely. So I talked about in the consistency phase, it was about doing something every day. The efficiency is about doing the right thing every day. So I have this saying out there called get going and then get good. Now we're in the get good phase. And this is things like um, if I, I mentioned that I'm a runner, I can't run 25 hours a day. I can't cycle 30 hours a day. There's just not that much time. So how do I start getting efficient with the way I do my workouts? How do I get efficient by stretching core exercises and making sure all my little muscles are stable, are stabilizing muscles are built up, ready to take on that task from an Ironman standpoint. But in finance, now it's something like moving that dollar from checking into a savings. Maybe you find a higher yielding savings account. Maybe it's taking money out of your paycheck every every paycheck that you get and putting it into the market on a, a higher growth vehicle. It's being more efficient with the consistent actions that you're doing every single day. Love it. And with repetition comes practice, right? Practice creates a habit. Habit makes it more efficient. Yep. Love that. Okay. And what's number four? And then the last one is, Kim, I would love to hear if you have a good analogy here, but it's compounding. And compounding is really about just letting your consistent, efficient actions build up over time. There's a saying out there that Albert Einstein said compounding was the eighth wonder of the world or something like that. Yeah. And I want to throw a big asterisk on that and say it's uninterrupted compounding. It's doing those consistent actions that are now efficient, marching you towards your goal every single day without interruption that just build up over time. I love it. And compounding is really how the daily coach you know, broke free from the average pack in my franchise and became, you know, the leader because I got clear. You're going to like this. I got clear. Then I decided to be very consistent. I held myself accountable to what I was doing. And with, it, with that became efficient because in the beginning, that number one thing that I did was all centered around lead generation. And in the beginning, when I decided, all right, I'm going to get really clear about finding, you know, one person a day, you know, about who wants to find a franchise. And this is applicable to any franchise business. It's getting clear on what's that one thing that has that's the gas pedal that drives the best result in your business. And and then it's being consistent on the days I felt like it and on the days I didn't feel like it, like going to the gym. It was like, Kim, I don't feel like I don't feel like prospecting today, but you got to do it. You got to do it. And, you know, every day that I did it, I, I wasn't immediately rewarded. And I didn't, and sometimes it was just like, I don't even know what to do today, but I'm going to do something today because I wanted to keep that momentum going. And I'm telling you, Matt, once I got that momentum going and it just became efficient, it was the thing that I look forward to doing in my business because I had some leverage of the momentum behind me, then my results were compounded. It went from getting one per week to seven per week to 10 per week to more leads than I could possibly handle to building the biggest pipeline in the history of franchise consulting. And literally, that's what made me the top producer. I didn't have to worry about who took a job or who was going to say no or who couldn't say yes to their dreams today. All I had to worry about was what I could control, which was how many people I could put into my process who were interested in starting and statistically enough would fall out my way. And in every single franchise back, that was 2012, guys. In every single franchise that I have coached people to, I have shared that. Ready for it? daily mindset <laughs> and the daily plan, as it's called to be, all of my candidates have heard it. And I adapt it to the numbers that they're able to pull out of their franchise once we figure out where that gas pedal is. And it's always that compounding effect, a thousand percent. The difference between good and great in anything in life, it's inches, not yards. It's, it's that one extra day of practice a week, right? It's that one extra rep in the gym. It's that one extra cardio workout, right? It's never, my dad taught me that when I was a little girl, he used to use some baseball analogy about the all time best hitting, you know, players and the average players. It was like one more hit every 10 times you were up at bat made you an all time history making batter compared to an average mediocre batter. It was like, you know, he was teaching me when I was little that it's, it's a game. Life is a game of subtleties and it's these subtle things that the top performing people know and are clear about are focused on are consistent with are practicing them and getting efficient at them. And those results are co compounded over time. 
Yeah. And I love that you mentioned, so lead generation is important for any business out there, right? So it's the consistency of doing that. And I feel like sometimes we get on our highs where business is really good and we don't think about the mundane things that got us there. And that's why I throw the big asterisks on it, the uninterrupted compounding, because you have to keep doing those things that made you successful and figure out where you can gain those efficiencies. Absolutely. There were days when my, I remember in the early days, I equate it to lifting weights because everybody understands that. And basically that's my mindset as the personal trainer at heart. Like, you know, when you go to the gym and you want to bench press a hundred pounds, let's say as a girl, I want to bench press a hundred pounds, you know, I can't start out at a hundred. I got to start out with just the bar 45, you know, and then I get to 55 and 65. And the first time you do a hundred, it's like, oh my gosh, this is so heavy. But the more you do it, the better you get, the stronger you get, the easier easier it becomes. And so it's like lifting weights. I had this pipeline that I could have easily said, I don't need to prospect today. I have so many people. I need people to fall out. I don't have time for all these people. But I didn't do that because I said to myself at the beginning of the year, what would happen if? And I held myself accountable to that if. And that if, that question made all the difference in the world. It made me a history maker. It can make you, the listener, a history maker. It's enabled Matt to be who he is today at the what? Age of 19. How old are you, Matt? You look like you're 20 years old. <laughs> 35, but I'll take I'll take 21. <laughs> you have a very young face. This is the difference. It's all in mindset. So many people, when they're looking at owning a franchise, it's all about what's the franchisor going to do for me? What's their toolbox? What's their marketing? What's their tech? And all of that's important. It's important for leverage. It's important for speed to market. It's important. But tools and brands and franchisors do not make franchisees successful. They help, but only the franchisee can make themselves successful. Only Matt could make himself successful. Do you agree, Matt? Absolutely. And I love when you talked about the 100 pounds and starting with the bar at 45 pounds, because everybody, I think, has this tendency to think if I can't do 100, then there's no point in doing it. We always want to be at that end stage. But with consistency, I've also found that you gain confidence through it as well. I um, I took a hot boxing class the other day, and I think I have overemphasized that I am really good at running long distances straight in a path no coordination needed. And oh my gosh, Kim, I was the most uncoordinated thing ever. And yes, very, very sore. sore. Very I sore. I you would be sore. <laughs> but I mean, it just goes back to it. Like that's not something I've done before. So I can view it as two different ways. Like the next time it's going to get easier if as long as I keep doing it, or I can say, I will never be like that person. And since I can't be that person, the instructor level today, then no point in even doing Might it. quit. Yeah, might as well quit. <laughs> but I think that the more you do things, the more confident you become. So I would encourage people to find out where you're trying to go, find that one five minute task that you can commit to doing every single day and tell me. And if you do that every single day, six months from now, you won't be more confident and closer to your goal. And I'll tell you why through the energy of the universe and the law of attraction, you're gonna be more confident because you're coming from an abundant place. Once you have momentum on your side, moving you toward this clear goal, like attracts like. That's the compounding effect. So the more you are attracting to you, the more you're going to feel this abundance, the more happy you're going to feel, and the more that cycle is gonna feed itself. And that's why he's so right when he says uninterrupted. Because when your stream is in, when your boat is in the water and you are heading downstream, if you're in a rapid water, you are going to go. There's no choice but to go. And, the, you know, the, that's a, it's a great analogy because you think whenever you interrupt that compounding, basically what you're doing is turning your boat and going upstream. Whenever you doubt what you want, you're turning your boat and going upstream. Whenever you talk against yourself, so I want this, but you're turning your boat upstream, right? Whenever you talk against what you want, just envision that you're turning your boat upstream. Well, that's really, really dumb. Yeah. And not <laughs> efficient. Really, it makes life so hard. And not <laughs> With, efficient. Yeah, when they say you can be, have, and do anything you want in this life, it's 100% true. If you don't if you don't believe it, call me one-on-one. -on -one. I will have that conversation with you because I have achieved some ridiculous goals simply by declaring that, that that they were true and creating enough momentum, momentum in my thought process that I really, really believe they were true. And then what happens? They become true. 
because that's the law of attraction. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think momentum is one of the hardest things to stop once it gets going. And I'm trying to come up with a good analogy, but I'm a little slow today. But I'm thinking of I like a one. penny. Like if you drop a penny from your six feet, it, nothing wrong. But if you drop a penny from 100 feet up in the air or the Eiffel Tower, then it's enough to crack the sidewalk. So what's your You're right? What's your um, another analogy is the streets in San Francisco. So if you if you put a car at the top of that hill, is it better for you if you had to stop that car to be right at the top or to be at the bottom? That's it. <laughs> at the bottom of that hill, you're dead. <laughs> That's it. That's it. It's just an avalanche. Yeah, exactly. This is awesome. I really, really appreciate you being my daily double guest today, Matt. I think you're an incredible human being, and I hope that my listeners feel that same way now, too. Absolutely. Well, it's always fun to talk about goal setting and how people can achieve them, so... Now, you also have a podcast, so let's put a little plug in for that. What, tell the audience where they can find your podcast, the name of it, and how to reach you if they want to reach out to you. Absolutely. So it's called Ice Cream with Investors. Um, and the whole goal is that I felt like going out of 2020, we were at a very pessimistic state and people don't realize how great of a time we live in is. So I think that it's really hard to be pessimistic if you're thinking about talking about ice cream. So we're throwing our little spin on it. We focus a lot on real estate because that's where my background is. But the goal over time is to find different folks in different niches to uh, bring onto the show so that anybody that's learning, wanting to learn how to build income streams can uh, uh, find a niche that works for them. The best way to reach out to me, we just launched the website, icecreamwithinvestors.com, but I'm also very active on LinkedIn. You can find uh, Matt Four on LinkedIn. You'll see Nashville and a big technology company and my ugly face smiling back at you. Happy to talk to anybody out there that's looking to achieve goals or finance or anything like that. And that's F-O-R-E, Matt Four, F-O-R-E, just like daily is D-A-L-Y. <laughs> Okay, guys, thank you so much for tuning into this episode. Matt, I hope to have you back. Maybe we'll make it a triple, the first daily triple. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Until next time, I am Kim Daly, and I want to be your daily coach. If you found this inspiring, please contact me at inquire at kimdaily.tv. My consulting services are totally free to you. Again, that email is inquire at kimdaily.tv. I can't wait to hear from you.